All right. Now, 27. I'm going to let you all read this one. I'm going to give you all about a minute to read it. Okay. Are you all ready to try this question out? Okay. So, I guess for this question, the key thing you need to realize is this is what I mean by they can give you completely new organic compounds you've never seen before, and you have to use properties and reactions and your principles that you learn to break this down. So this is very much a mod seven question. So have a look here. What is my tip to all of you? When you have new compounds with weird, f funky functional groups, Anthony, what might you like to do? Uh, draw it out. Exactly, right? I'd like to draw it in full expanded form. So ethanol chloride is CH3, and then I know I've got a carbon connected to a double bond carbonyl group and i've got a chlorine attached there make sense now i need to first know the reaction between this compound i need to know it's very reactive that's the one thing i've learned from above here and it's going to react with one propanol so let's draw propan monol so how can we form an ester here everyone you have to think about this what is an ester linkage Taha? C Exactly. You're trying to get a COC. And what I can see straight away is if we've got a C, we've got an O, we need to somehow get rid of this H and we need to get rid of this CL. And that will enable us to form C, O, C, an ester. Right? And remember, one of the carbons needs to have that carbonyl group. So we straight away know this reaction and what it's going to produce. Even though we've never ever seen ethanol chloride before, you can extrapolate that ethanol chloride is going to form. It's going to be CH3. You can do full you can do full expanded structure. That was also completely right. In fact, I would encourage you to do that instead. So with mod seven questions, feel free to write a full structural equation. So CH3, I'm just going to do it condensed in the interest of time. COCL combines with C3. H7, OH, and we're going to form HCl as a product. Do you all realize that? Because the H and the Cl will now be removed from solution, right? And what else will we form? We form our ester, which is CH3, COO, and you can go C3, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. So you can you can write this correctly. I'd do the full condensed structural, but make sure you do the expanded form, right? I'm just being lazy here. But does that make sense to everyone? You would just draw the full structural there. Okay. And so Milt, did it make sense that we will produce HCL as a product? Yeah. Okay. Now I'm anticipating for the next question, which is the two disadvantages, they're going to be related to this. OK, because that is the difference between normal esterification and this type of esterification. OK, so let's think about this. So there's two disadvantages for using an acyl chloride rather than a carboxylic acid to produce an ester. What are we all thinking? Hydrochloric acid is a more dangerous compound than the water that would be normally produced. Yeah, very good. So that's safety considerations and it's also a volatile gas. And even though we can do refluxing, some gas can escape, right? So it potentially can be safety effects. Anything else that we can think of? Uh, disposal issues, because it's not water anymore that you're going to be releasing. Into the Sorry, could you repeat that? What was uh, that? Issues with disposal, because it's not water that you're going to be releasing into the environment. If you do Okay, disposal. safety and disposal. I want you to treat that as one, one issue altogether. Issues with safety and disposal. You need to anticipate that they will mark you harshly. Anything else? It would produce salt it would produce a salt mm. how so serene how would it produce a salt hcl react with the alcohol hcl combines with the alcohol well you think you have to think about this hcl is an acid oh, okay it wouldn't really react with the alcohol i can see it could react with a hydrocarbon but we don't really have one anything else that we can think of um possibly unwanted reactions occurring because Acyl chloride is more reactive. Okay, good, good. Anything else that we can pick up at all? Oh, uh, strongly exothermic reaction. Yeah, so, oh, where, so there's, um, ethanol chloride can be a strongly exothermic reaction. Very good. Very good. Is there anything interesting about this? Very good. Anthony's looked at the information and he's mentioned we haven't even spoken about this point and there's a reason they would tell you it's strongly exothermic. Good. 
good pickup. Anything you'd want to mention about that? How is it going to affect anything? Being strongly exothermic. Yield and reaction rate. There's going to be a trade-off. Mm, mm, there we go. Very good pickup, Anthony. So A is forming B, and this reaction is exothermic, meaning we produce heat. So when we heat this entire system in refluxing, Anthony, what's it going to do to the yield? Uh, reduce the yield. Yes, Anthony would have been the student to get two out of two for that. Very good. Good job. Very good. Good pickup. That's it. That was the second point that we're looking for. Good. So pretty much, I guess, what you all learned from this point is every single keyword that you see, which is unusual or different, underline it. Because what happens is if you didn't underline it the first time, you would skip over it because it looks just like normal text. But imagine if you went through this question again and you underlined it, very reactive. You blocked it off. Carbonyl group, chlorine atom, strongly exothermic. So when you come back and when you're unsure, you can look at this point. Have I accounted for this? Yes. Accounted for this? Yes. Yes. Have I spoken about this at all? There's a reason they gave it to me. And then very good. You applied it there. That's it. Good.